Sometimes people ask, how can a shift register and polynomial division end up in the same place? Let's take a look at a side-by-side -side example of a CRC shift register and a CRC polynomial division process and see how they end up being exactly the same computation. For this computation, we're going to check the validity of a code word by seeing whether the code word mod the CRC polynomial ends up being the value 0. For a data word, we'll use binary 101. We we'll use a 5-bit check value that's already been computed of 10001. That ends up being a code word of polynomial x to the 7th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus 1. And we use a CRC polynomial value of x to the 5th plus x squared plus 1. What we're computing is whether x to the 7th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus 1 mod x to the 5th plus x squared plus 1 equals 0. If it equals 0, it's a valid code word. If it does not equal 0, it's not a valid code word. But we're not going to use the explicit polynomial notation. We'll just use the coefficients, which are binary coefficients with the value 0 and 1. For this comparison, we'll put the shift register version at the top and the polynomial division version at the bottom. They both start out with the same code word with the check value and data value as indicated. To set up the long division, we take the divisor, which is the feedback polynomial. To set up the hardware, we use a feedback shift register with the same polynomial with the zero positions doing nothing and the one positions the polynomial involving feedback through an XOR register. Note that the bits in the feedback polynomial and the hardware exactly correspond to the divisor. Before we can start, we need to initialize the feedback shift register with some initial values, which will be all zero in this case, but in fact it can be any value that's an initial seed value. To make sure that the long division algorithm comes to the same answer the same way, we also use an initial seed value there, and it turns out this has to be prepended to the rest of the code word for the long division algorithm to work out properly. Just for emphasis, we can see that all the bits of the seed value and the code word are accounted for in both diagrams. Now let's get started. To make it easier to track what's going on, the active bits have been designated in red. There's nothing special in terms of the hardware. This is just a device to make it easier to see what's going on visually as we compare these algorithms. The active bits are always going to be all the bits that are in the shift register plus the top bit of the code word, which corresponds to the area in the long division that's actively under consideration for the next conditional XOR operation. As a first step, we do a conditional XOR at the topmost bit. And we find out that C4 in the hardware is a 0, so there's no feedback. And the top bit in the long division is 0, meaning we do not do a conditional XOR, so it's grayed out. We then compute the next intermediate value. At the top, that's done using a shift of all the current values left one bit position. And at the bottom, basically nothing happens. Long division, we do change our active bits one bit to the right. So when we do the next conditional XOR, it'll be shifted one bit to the right. Again, we see that the top bit, C4, and the topmost active bit in long division are zero. So there's really no change. All that happens is everything shifts. The shift register on the top is shifting everything to the left. And the long division on the bottom is shifting the conditional XOR one bit to the right for each step. We continue this until we finally get a one bit in the top position of C4 and in the top position of the active value on the dividend. And here we are. We now have a 1 on the top bit of the dividend active portion. We have a 1 in the C4 register. Now what happens? Well, in the hardware, the feedback value is 1, and that has the effect of inverting whatever data goes through the XOR gate on the shift register. Down in the long division, the XOR operation inverts whatever's in the current active area of the dividend and gives the opposite bit result down below if it's a 1 and gives the same value if it's a 0. So the computation now gives a new value of a 0, which is dropped out, followed by 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And you can see in the shift register, there are blue values that will be put into each of the bits, C0 through Z4. And you can see in long division, there's the blue bit values. That will be the next result of the conditional XOR process. We run a clock pulse through the hardware, and those values are shifted to the register and down in the long division. We now declare those 
bit results to be the active bits. At this point, there's two more bits to go. For the next bit, we see C4 is zero and the top active bit is zero. So that means nothing happens in long division. It just uses the same value except stripping out the top zero. And in the hardware, it's just a left bit shift by one. This gives us a new selection of active bits, which will be our last one because we're consuming the last bit of the code word. We have a value of 100101. We do a conditional XOR. The topmost active bit is a one. So we do the XOR. In the hardware version, the ones going into the XORs will invert the bits as they shift past. In the long division, we're going to XOR with the divisor. And we get a result that's then committed as the new active bits. We've used up all the code word bits, and we have an answer of 00000 for both the hardware and the long division. Since we've used up all the bits, the result of the long division process is the remainder, and the value in the CRC hardware at the top also turns out to be the remainder computed exactly as a polynomial division algorithm would have computed it. Because we're validating a code word, the fact that both of these got a zero result means that the code word was valid, and we're done.